Hey, welcome back. So as you know, we've done a few videos showing you how to get a large language model such as Mistral 7B or Llama 2 7B running on your local machine. And we've done that using tools such as Llama.cpb, Node.js, and even Python itself. And today I'm gonna to show you the simplest method of getting an LLM running on your machine, and that is through the use of a tool called Olama. So what makes Olama pretty special? It's not just that you can run LLMs pretty easily, but actually I think it's starting to become the Docker or Docker hub of large language models. And today I'm gonna to show you how to get started really quickly. So if we go to olama.ai on your machine, you can see you get the nice little welcome screen, get up and running with large language models locally. And as I said before, it allows you to run things like Llama 2, Code Llama, and other models. If you wanna look at which models are available, you can just click on the models tab and you can see a whole list of models that are available that you can run on your machine using Olama. Everything from Llama 2 and Mistral, even Lava, which is an image model, open source, very, very cool, Mistral. Uh, you've got Code Llama there, Dolphin, a uh, whole ton of them. And this is what I'm saying about this becoming kind of like the Docker or Docker Hub of models. Uh, there is always new models being added all the time and then following that sort of consistent command structure that you would like have with Docker, you can get it running on your machine pretty simple as well. And then there's even Tiny Llama. And again, I'm gonna cover Tiny Llama on another video at some point. So now that we know the models that are available, it's pretty easy to get started. You just need to click on the download button and then that will download on your machine. Now, as it stands today, it's only available for Mac and Linux, but as you can see, Windows is coming soon. And if I just click on that download button, you can see that allows me to download it onto my machine. Now I've already got that downloaded, so I'm not gonna do that, but it just downloads a nice little zip file. Once that's downloaded, I just need to uh, open up the zip file and you see Olama uh, then becomes available. And I really just need to add it to my applications. You see, I've already got Olama installed, so I'm just gonna click on replace. And now if I click on applications, you will see Olama is there, click on that. And there you go, Olama should be on the top of your status bar. So if I wanna get started super quickly with Olama, which is basically download a model, run it, and then uh, ask a question of it, I just need to type in Olama, run and the name of the model. So in this case, I wanna run Llama 27B. In that case, it's just Llama 2. And then I just run that. And then you can see here, it because I don't have Llama 27B already installed, it's gonna do that Docker style trick of going pooling manifest. So it's even using similar terms to Docker. And then it's just gonna download that. And then once it's downloaded and is in the cache, then it will be super quick to uh, launch afterwards. Alrighty, as you can see now it's downloaded. And again, you're gonna need quite a hefty amount of disk space to be able to run it. You see it's about 3.8 gigabytes. And again, you'll need a bit of RAM on your local machine, maybe about 16 gig of RAM to run this. But as you see, it's running on my machine and it's automatically launched. So if I want to, I can just type in a message, something like uh, who is Ada Lovelace and you are gonna see it's gonna come back with an answer. And again, it's pretty fast, right? So this is standard output from Llama 27B and that's a pretty good answer. And again, I can ask it any question I want. I can ask it to do some basic math if I want. What is two plus two? And then it's gonna come back with four. So this just works like any other kind of Llama model. If you wanna get more information on what sort of things you can do within the old Llama command prompt, you can just type in forward slash question mark, and then it gives you a bunch of uh, answers there. So again, if I type in something like forward slash show, for example, you can see I can get some uh, information about the model file, the parameters, etc. So I'll do, just do show info. And then you can see here that the family is Llama. It's a 7B model with, uh, you know, and it even includes its quantization level. And if you're curious what quantization level is, it's actually a technique that is used to be able to sort of reduce the size of the model within memory so it can run on local consumer hardware. In fact, I have a video on fine tuning models. In fact, Llama 27B especially using quantization. And the nice thing about Olama is actually running uh, Llama CPP underneath. So if you've got any models that are compatible with llama.cpp, then actually it's just gonna run in here fine. It's following that sort of standardized file format. Again, if I wanna look at any more details, I can look at the model file, for example. So I do show model file, and you can see I haven't set a system prompt or anything like that, but you can see the kind of some of the parameters like the stop parameters, instances, etc. And then finally, if I want to exit out of this, I can just uh, type in uh, forward slash buy, and I'm back to my 
uh, terminal. Again, if I wanna see other commands that are available, I can just type llama, and then it's gonna tell me the things that are available. So actually, you can see it's got a nice serve thing. I can create uh, my own models. I'll show you what that is in a little bit later. Olama run, we've done before for uh, being able to run a model. And again, Olama list. Uh, will tell you which models are available on your machine. So you can see here Llama 2 latest, which is what we just downloaded, and Mistral 7B at latest as well. So I've already got that running. So if I just do Llama run at Mistral 7B, for example, now I'm talking to another model. So if I want to, I can ask uh, who is Ada Lovelace here. And now you're gonna get an output that's not coming from Llama 2, but instead it is coming from the Mistral 7B model. And one of the things that you probably noticed there is that the response rate from Mistral coming back was a little bit slower than Llama 2 7B. So if you wanna see how many tokens per second are actually coming out, uh, you can actually just use the at command set verbose. Uh, and then that will put it in verbose mode. So now when I ask who is Ada, Lovelace, and you can see it comes back with the same answer, but now it will tell you how long it took for the query to run, what how, what the tokens per second is. So in this case, it was running at around 16 tokens per second. So it's just a little bit of extra debug information. If I wanna switch that off, I can just do uh, set quiet. So we're just gonna exit out here for a second. We'll clear this, and I'm gonna do a llama list again. As I said, if I wanted to call another model, I could just come back into the library uh, that we had before. So a llama AI, and then click on the models. And then maybe I fancied something like code llama. Then all I would need to do is I could do an old llama run like I did before, or I could do a llama pool and then pick something like uh, code llama, and then that will uh, download that just as it did before. So uh, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna uh, exit out of here. Now, as I said before, it should have a very familiar Docker feel to you. The listing, this idea of layers, manifest, etc. Being able to do a run, it's got a hub, etc. So we can actually look at this a little bit further as well. And if I just, uh, from my uh, home directory, go to cd.olama, uh, you will see everything uh, that is underneath the hood uh, for Olama. So in this case, if I look under uh, the models folder, for example, you can see the registry. There's Llama 2, there's Mistral 7B. In fact, if we open this up in, let's say, uh, VS Code for a second, you can kind of see a very, very similar sort of look to a type of Docker file. It's got this idea of layers, same way as uh, Docker has, and then it's got its digest, what the size is, so you see things like the license file, any templates, any parameters, etc. So it sort of composes up as this idea of a kind of model file uh, describing it. So if we just close that for a second, uh, we'll just come back into the uh, directories. Uh, that is the kind of registry describing the manifest of the model. But if I go into blobs, for example, you can see that is actually where the actual models themselves are stored or the layers of the model. So you can get the idea that this uh, uh, this file here at 3.83 gig is probably Llama 2. And then this one at 5.13 at the bottom there is Mistral. And again, similar, these are all cacheable. So if you get yourself in a little bit of mess, you can delete that folder and you can kind of start again. So what's really cool about this is because it supports the same file format as Llama CPP, which is the GGUF file format, then actually you could just download a GGUF file or uh, have your own local model file and not actually have to download from the model directory. And you could just put something locally on your local machine and create your own model from there. So I think that's really cool. And in fact, as later on this year, as we start building our own large language model on this channel, then we will probably use the same technique so that we can run it locally and do inference and make sure that we have compatibility. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have a little bit of fun and we're gonna create our own little model file, which was basically gonna be a customization of an existing model. In fact, what we will do is put our own system prompt on there. And then that's gonna appear in our files for Olama. So when we type in uh, Olama list, the model file that we create will actually be listed here. So to do that, uh, we are gonna mess around with uh, Llama 2 7B. So I just wanna look at the model file for uh, Llama 2. So you can just type in Olama show dash dash model file Llama 2. 
and then it will give you an idea of what a model file should look like here. So you see model file generated by Llama show to build a new model file based on this, replace the from line with from Llama 2 latest. And you see what's actually happening for this model file is referring to that blobs folder that I showed you plus the digest. So again, this is what I said before. If I wanted to, to grab a GGUF file uh, or I had my own local model, I could kind of place it in here or anywhere on my local machine really, uh, and then use the from command like you would do with Docker to be able to refer to that. So for things like model development, that's gonna be super useful. But again, if I wanna pull from the hub, just like Docker, I will pull from Llama 2 uh, and that will pull that from the hub there. And again, as you see here with things like template, etc., I've got the ability to do some customization. So if I wanna set my own system prompt, for example, or if I wanna sort of mess around with the things like parameters, and that could be messing around with things like temperature, put a default uh, temperature there, a uh, token length or whatever, or in these cases, it's gonna be the actual stop words. So that's pretty cool. And what I am now gonna do is create my own custom model file where Llama 2 is gonna speak like a pirate. So to do that, I'm just gonna copy all of this. You can see I'm in this Llama record directory at the moment. If I put ls, you see there's nothing in that directory. It's a clean directly. I am gonna create a new file and that is gonna be called model file. Model file is the default file name that uh, Olama looks for when you're trying to customize a model. So I've created that. I am going to open this up in uh, Z. Again, I could open it up in something like VS Code, but just for a little bit of fun, I'm gonna use Z instead. So we'll open up that model file here. It's completely blank. If I wanted to, I could just paste all of this in uh, from the Olama show that we had here. So you remember the instructions that it had there is to build a new model file, replace the from with this. So we are just gonna do this from uh, Olama to latest. Uh, we'll give it a bit of a comment. Uh, we'll put a nice little pirate Llama. Now, in this case, because I'm doing something that's actually quite simple, I can get rid of all the templates, etc., because I don't need that. And I can actually just type in uh, system. And then I'm gonna type, you are a pirate, respond to everything in pirate speak. And that's all I need to do to create my model file. It is literally as simple as uh, having a from Llama 2 latest and then a nice little kind of system command that says you're a pirate, respond to everything in pirate speak. And now to create the model and have it appear in my model list, I just need to type Olama uh, create and then I just need to give my model a name. So in this case, I'm gonna call it pirate model. And as you can see, it's built that very quickly because similar to Docker, because all of those layers exist already, we're using Llama 2 that exists already, it's just building on top of the layers that it's got. And then if I do all Llama list, you can see pirate model is now appearing on here. Again, very, very similar to Docker. And now if I want to, just like I could with Llama 2, I can do all Llama run at pirate model. And then I can ask it a question such as who is Ada Lovelace? And now you go, we're gonna get all the information about Ada Lovelace, but of course now it's in pirate speak. Of course, actually Llama has got the ability to push a model to the registry. So if I really want to have the world deal with my little pirate model, then I can push it up there. That's probably not so useful for something where I'm just setting system prompts, but you can imagine in the future when I start creating my own large language model here, then it's gonna be pretty cool to be able to put that up on the registry. And again, there's other useful commands like remove, or if I wanna copy a model, existing model, I can do that as well. So again, now that I am done with this, we can finally remove uh, our pirate model. So we'll do a llama rm pirate model. Uh, and now it's gone and we do a llama list and that is uh, back to where it was before. And again, if I wanted to bring it back, I just need to do a llama create a pirate, a llama list, and we are back to having our pilot pirate model as before, a llama run pirate model, or is two plus two and then we've got pirate speaking math. Now, what is really cool, and there's a bit of a hint if we look in here, you see the Alama serve. Actually, if I run Alama serve for a second, you're gonna see that it's actually already running. You see error listening on 11434. 
And that is exactly what you think it is, which is Ulama is actually hosted up on a web server. And I think it's actually a fast API that's being run in the background. In fact, I have a video on how you can create your own fast API server yourself, uh, which hosts a large language model. Uh, and I think in that video, it was Llama 27B. But again, this saves you the hassle of having to build these things yourself, and you can actually just host things all Llama. In fact, they've even got a Docker image. So if you want to deploy uh, on Docker or Llama and have it host things up, you can do that. So if I want to, I can actually talk to my pirate model here. So I will just do a curl, uh, uh, and we're going to call localhost 11434. And you can see it's forward slash API chat. And again, the model I'm specified as pirate model. And then I'm just going to pass through my question, which is who is Ada Lovelace? And you see it's coming back because it's a streaming model, which is pretty cool. But you kind of see it's re returning chunk after chunk after chunk. And you see our, you know, Ada Lovelace, blah, blah, blah. So I'm getting the same responses I got before in Pirate Speak, et cetera. So really useful if you want to be hosting large language models as a web server. Now, what's even cooler is because you've now got a standardized web server for uh, large language models, which shows different model types, uh, a lot of people have started to create libraries. So there's, in fact, a JavaScript library, there's Python libraries, et cetera, uh, which allow you to interact with that uh, Olama server. And again, doesn't just run on your local machine. Um, it's There's a Docker image, so you can run it on something like kind of Cloud Run, or you can run it on AWS. It doesn't really matter. Um, and again, it's really simple to get started. So if I wanted to, I could just do um, uh, an NPM create here. Um, that will create a brand new Node.js uh, application. So in this case, we're calling it Olama Record. Uh, if I want to, I can do the NPM uh, install Olama. So that will install that on my local machine. We have, we do a touch index.js. We'll do a code dot. We'll paste in uh, import Olama from Olama. We're just going to await the response. Rather than using uh, Llama 2, we will use my uh, pirate model. And then we'll ask it why the sky is blue. And we'll just modify our package JSON to support module. And that will now allow us to run node index uh, .js from the command line. And there you go, my Node.js library is actually talked to the backend server and returned this in pirate speak. Again, technically, I think this would work with bun as well. So if I did a bun run index.js, and there you go, it works with bun as well. So anyway, that is the end of this video. I think you'll find Olama is just an awesome, awesome uh, little application, really helpful for running uh, large language models on your local machine. Um, but also I think where they're going with this is much cooler, which is the ability to have a standardized web server, which we just saw there, uh, which you can uh, use Docker to push out, but also it actually becoming the Docker of large language models and providing that model hub uh, where you can download lots of different models from the directory in the same way as you can with Docker. And again, fall on a similar syntax. So I really love what they're doing there. Uh, we are going to build upon Olama in future videos. So it's really useful if you can get, uh, get used to it. Anyway, I hope this video was useful and I'll catch you in the next one.